First, ano to? Anong bill? Uh, wala pa lang number dito ba? Mr. President, esteemed colleagues in the Senate, but before that, I would like to acknowledge the presence of Budget Secretary Benjamin Diokno in the gallery today. And the, our colleagues in government from the Department of Budget and Management. It is my honor to sponsor today a proposed measure that will change the way we do budgeting in this country. It will make our budget system one of the best in the world. With your kind indulgence, may I present Senate Bill Number 1761 under Committee Report 304 or the proposed Budget Reform Act. The BRB is vital at this point in our country's ongoing development because it was crafted specifically to institutionalize many reforms that are meant to cure a number of weaknesses in our public financial management system. It will provide as well the necessary mechanisms to help achieve the administration's goals of propelling the economy to grow at 7 to 8 percent from 2018 to 2022, putting the country into upper middle income status by 2022 and reducing poverty from 21.6 percent in 2015 to 14 percent by 2022. To achieve these lofty goals, the Duterte administration has adopted an expansionary fiscal policy. It is investing heavily in infrastructure development via its Build, Build, Build program, targeting total infrastructure spending to reach 7.3% of GDP by 2022. Historically, the Philippines has only spent 2.6% of GDP during the last half century. The exponential rise in the planned infrastructure spending would need a modern, efficient, and transparent budget system. The benefits of the Build, Build, Build program are crystal clear. By building quality roads and bridges, airports, commuter and cargo trains, urban rail systems, and other infrastructure facilities, the mobility of people, and the transport of agricultural products from the farm to the market would become easier, comfortable, less costly. As President Duterte said on many occasions, build, build, build are words that refer not only to physical structures. These are tools to build a progressive nation, as well as transform our people, ensuring that their development needs are met so that they become more productive and rightly share in the overall progress of the country. As an accompanying goal, the administration also plans to invest heavily in education, health services, and social welfare to develop the citizenry's full potential. This Budget Reform Act, if enacted, can be a powerful tool to bring these goals to fruition as it incorporates globally recognized PFM principles and practices that could ensure that funds are carefully managed, used, that the right goods and services are delivered to their potential beneficiaries at the right place at the right time. May I also add that this measure will allow us to seal our remarkable spot in fiscal transparency among the countries of the world. Early this year, the International Budget Partnership's Open Budget Survey released its 2017 Open Budget Index results. The Philippines scored 67% and the perfect score is 100. This is up from 64 in 2015. The Philippines score is much higher than the global average of 42. This made the Philippines number one in Asia for budget transparency. I repeat, this has not hit the papers yet or social media. The Philippines is number one in Asia for budget transparency and number 19 in the world out of 115 countries surveyed. I think, Mr. President, and I believe this is a laudable feat for the Philippine government, a great achievement, a significant improvement from number 23 in 2015 out of 102 
we are now 19 out of 115. And I repeat, number one in Asia. In the area of public participation, the Philippines has likewise surpassed other Asian countries. The Philippines is one of the top four countries in the area of public participation. The other top three are all first world countries. What does this recognition tell us? It indicates that the world community has come to recognize the Philippines' improved efforts to pursue fiscal transparency by making budget information comprehensive, timely, and accessible to the public. This bill incorporates provisions on budget transparency, which could institutionalize these desirable efforts. What is a role as legislators in the midst of all these? It is within our power, our mandate, to make these goals achievable and sustainable. As I've mentioned earlier, this bill can provide a cure for many of the country's PFM weaknesses. Certain weaknesses were identified in the public expenditure and financial accountability assessment conducted by the World Bank in 2014 to 2016, particularly in terms of budget credibility, reliability, accounting, and reporting. These weaknesses are highly technical and as such may be addressed only through innovations and technology-supported systems. Such weaknesses include weak linkage of the plan with the budget, slow budget execution, weak budget reliability, delays in the submission of reports due to manual recording to transactions, ambiguity in the definition and use of savings. Allow me to give you a quick rundown on the key provisions of the bill which could address these PFM gaps and weaknesses. The biggest change that this proposed measure will affect on the budgeting landscape is a shift from a two-year obligation-based budget to an annual cash-based budget. This is the core of the reform, the one that will change the course of our budgeting system. Under an annual cash-based budget system, contractual obligations incurred by the government for a particular year may not go beyond that fiscal year. Actually, the 2018 budget is a 12-month budget. We are trying it now. I know that some agencies are complaining, but we have to instill discipline on the agencies to spend their budget wisely and efficiently. This will do away with continuing appropriations where an unused MOE and CO are carried over to the next fiscal year. Likewise, payments should be made for goods and services delivered, inspected, accepted within the fiscal year, up to a three-month extended payment period. This will spur the economy as well. This new system will yield a number of benefits which are guaranteed to be seen and experienced by our people. Just to cite a few, better planning of programs and projects. Knowing that programs and projects to be incorporated in the national budget are those implementable within the year, heads of agencies will plan better for their programs and projects. Hindi na yung asakana, bahala na, meron pa naman next year. This bill will instill discipline among the planning, budget, and program project officers of agencies. It will likewise promote closer coordination between them to ensure that only implementation-ready projects are proposed for funding. Therefore, all other work such as project program development, engineering designs, pre-construction activities should be completed prior to the request for funding. Second, reduced underspending. Ito po yung ating pinagigigilan. Dahil, pag hindi po ginagastos ang pondo ng gobyerno para sa nakatakdang panggastos, that's an injustice. The people need help and therefore the spending should be made sa takdang panahon para mabigay ang serbisyo sa taong bayan. Since budget implementation will be quickened, underspending will be greatly reduced, if not totally eliminated. 
government underspending in 2014 and 2015 reached 13.25% of the budget or 302.7 billion. Imagine all of those who need health care. Imagine all the classrooms that need to be built and rehabilitated. Imagine free tertiary education. Imagine all of the roads that could have been built. And 12.83% or 328.3 billion pesos in 2015. Underspending means foregone opportunities. These are resources that Congress authorized but are not used or converted into goods or services that the people could have benefited from. In pursuit of its goal to reduce underspending, the Duterte administration effectively cut underspending. Believe it or not, again, it may not hit the headlines or social media, but this should be discussed and talked about. The underspending in 2017 was cut to a measly 2.9%, as I said, from 13.25% in 2014, 12.23% in 2014, 15, 2.9% in 2017, thus proving in the initial run of the one-year validity of appropriations, that such a goal is achievable. And this bill, Mr. President, will institutionalize this practice. Third, foster a better business environment. With a shift to a cash-based budget, goods delivered or services rendered within the year will be paid within the year. How long have we heard those in the private sector say, ang tagal-tagal magbayad ng gobyerno para hindi magbabayad. <clears throat> this reduces the activities in the grassroots or in the private sector. We need a more robust economic activity and this shift to annual cash-based budget hopefully will cure that. With the government as a good payor, more business enterprises will be enticed to engage with it. Fourth, greater focus on implementation. With the one-year validity of appropriations, the practice of having continuing appropriations will be ended. Consequently, the budget process will be simplified. The unwieldy practice of simultaneously implementing programs and projects funded from the budget of the previous and current years will be a thing of the past. As a result, government executives will be able to focus on the current year's activities. This will also eliminate the practice of window dressing, where the national government will park money with government corporations to give the illusion that the former is utilizing the budget more quickly. How many times have we known this? Remember, it was a TOTR budget during one of my hearings when we saw in the previous administration that more than 50% of its funds were not utilized. So what did we do? It was transferred to the GOCCs. Now we have to see how this administration parking the funds of the previous administration's DOTR budget actually spent it. Baka no obliga, hindi naman ginastos. In fact, the money was just parked with government corporations. With this bill, the undisbursed surplus of the budget to government corporations will have to revert to the Treasury if not used within the fiscal year. In short, hindi po pwedeng gamitin na parking space lang ang mga korporasyon dahil ito ay cash-based budgeting at ibabalik po na mga GOCC sa Treasury ang hindi nila kayang gastusin na ipapark lang ng national agencies. The fiscal managers, however, are committed to help departments and agency heads to implement and complete their programs and projects faster. The bill seeks to institutionalize measures that are currently being adopted or in the process of adoption. These include the following. Early procurement. The BRA fosters and supports the practice of early procurement as a general rule to ensure timely awarding of contracts and implementation of programs and projects. How do we do this? For one, government agencies will have to adjust their procurement calendar so that all procurement start from August of the previous year, which is the start of the early procurement period, until June of the current fiscal year. The GAA, as allotment release order. 
The bill seeks to institutionalize the system, the practice, which started in 2014 <clears throat> that already considers the GAA as an allotment release document. It shall be the basis to enter into contract. With the GAA as the allotment order, government agencies can begin to award contracts at the start of the fiscal year. Except for releases from the special purpose funds, no additional documents will be required from the Department of Budget and Management before agencies can enter into contractual obligations with contractors, suppliers, or service providers. This reform will be institutionalized by the BRA, thus ensuring faster implementation of programs and projects. It would also limit the discretion by the DBM with regards to the release of funds. Multi-year contracting authority. The implementation of projects that require more than a year will still be allowed under a multi-year contract entered into by a government agency through a multi-year contracting authority. An equivalent authority may be issued by government-owned and controlled corporations as well as authorities of the local government units. These projects will be given multi-year funding based on a proposed project schedule. As such, only those appropriated for a given year will be released accordingly. Impoundment provision. This bill also includes the impoundment provision under the 2018 GAA. It allows the President to propose the recession of appropriations to Congress when the appropriations are no longer required to fulfill the objective originally sought to be achieved or in case of unmanageable deficit. Congress is mandated to act on the impoundment proposal within 30 session days. Congressional inaction is equivalent to disapproval of the President's proposal for impoundment. Because of its significance, let me repeat, mandating the shift from an obligation-based budget to an annual cash-based budget system and redefining the validity of appropriations are the main game-changing features of the Budget Reform Act. To date, the Philippines is the only country in the world that has a two-year obligation-based budget system. The Budget Reform Act has other equally important features, practices, innovations that are vital in strengthening our public financial management system in support of the country's continued and sustainable development and growth. This bill also clarifies the use of savings. The new definition of savings is made consistent with the Supreme Court ruling on the Disbursement Acceleration Program, or DAP. It is meant to prevent possible abuse by executive action. Through this bill, savings will only be limited to released but unobligated appropriations that result from completion, final discontinuance, or abandonment of an activity or project, and implementation of efficiency measures resulting in the delivery of the required or planned targets at a lesser cost. With the BRA, the Miscellaneous Personal Benefits Fund, MPBF, cannot be declared a savings as it pertains to unreleased appropriations and composed purely of personal service items. With this reform, the controversial Dengvaksha deal would have never happened. Promoting fiscal transparency and access to information. The BRA will give importance to the voice of the people. I mentioned earlier our accomplishment in terms of the results of the 2017 Open Budget Survey, a milestone that now makes the Philippines one of the global leaders in terms of budget transparency and public participation. <laughs> While the high score speaks volumes of our improved initiatives in budget transparency and public participation, it likewise magnifies the call for greater responsibility in engaging and involving our citizens in the budget process. We know that the phases of the national budget mainly revolve around people who know the technical aspects of the budget, but this should not be an excuse to ignore the citizens' voice in the process, especially since they know what their needs are. This bill 
will ensure citizen participation. The budget process will be participatory through the establishment and implementation of participatory budget mechanisms in all phases of the budget cycle for wider citizen engagement. The public will also have greater access to public financial information as a BRA requires posting of all documents and reports in the government website. Under the BRA, the DBM is mandated to publish the People's Budget, a citizen-friendly summary of the government's fiscal policies and expenditure priorities. Modernizing the Philippine Budget System. The main goal of this proposed measure is to modernize the Philippine budget system to make it advanced, credible, compliant with international best practices. The BRA will institutionalize reforms and practices that the government has initially yet gradually introduced in pursuit of a systematic and modern process of budgeting. Such need for innovations and technology supported systems gave birth to, among others, the Budget and Treasury Management System, BTMS, which will later lead to the Integrated Financial Management Information System, IFMIS, the Unified Accounts Code Structure, the UWACS, and the Treasury Single Account, TSA, for better cash management. The IFMIS, once developed, will fully automate the country's financial management information system and will be the single portal for all financial operations by all government agencies, including GOCCs and LGUs. This will enable timely and more transparent reports on government transactions which can be used for management decision making. The UWACS fortifies the use of an, important, of an important accounts coding system for all appropriations in the GAA, as well as all government transactions. This will facilitate and harmonize the budgeting, accounting, auditing, reporting of all government financial transactions. We can therefore better scrutinize the operations of agencies based on more accurate and timely reports. Meanwhile, the Treasury Single Account System, a tool for consolidating and managing the government's cash resources, will be institutionalized. This initiative has been crucial in lessening borrowings and progressively bringing down the share of the budget allocated for interest payments and give way to more spending for infrastructure and social services. Having a TSA will be a real test of our resolve to have a timely, transparent, and efficient budget system. With a TSA, the National Treasurer or the President or the Secretary of Finance or DBM Secretary would have at his or her smartphone information on the cash position of the Republic in real time. Sadly, at the moment, the more than a thousand different accounts, such information are not readily available in real time. The BRA will institutionalize having a TSA. It will aid decision making immensely. Strengthening the power of the purse. The national budget is a foundation upon which our agencies stand, solid and steady in the commitment to deliver public goods and services to the people in pursuit of the goals of both people and government. The constant challenge is how to effectively link the national budget with these goals to ensure that one supports and fulfills the other. And this challenge is best taken up by us, legislators. Clearly enshrined in the Constitution is a power vested solely in the legislature to appropriate funds. The power of the purse is our inherent power. It is our strength in ensuring the credibility in the use of public money. This power is what the Budget Reform Act intends to strengthen. With a strengthened power of the purse, we can review and approve proposed appropriations based on the targeted and actual performance of agencies. This is to ensure that we give enough budget to all agencies. No overspilling, no underspending. We will have the authority to limit the use of savings and strengthen accountability and transparency of our budget. Savings can only be used for the right purposes in reasonable situation. More importantly, Congress will have a stronger power to prevent abuses of a reenacted budget. As we value the role of the national budget 
in providing for the changing needs of our people, we value the need to authorize a new budget yearly. Only in extraordinary times should we resort to the reenactment of a budget. Improving fiscal responsibility. Another important provision of the bill provides for the review of all special accounts in the general fund, a special funds every three years by the permanent committee created under Executive Order 292 to determine if the same has to be terminated and modified under certain conditions enumerated in Section 47 of the bill. Sections 15, 16, 17 instruct the DBCC to prepare, subject to the approval of the President, the Statement of Fiscal Policy, which will contain a measurable medium-term macroeconomic and fiscal objective and a medium-term fiscal strategy and its annual updates, which will include a summary of fiscal policies on revenues, debt, deficit, expenditures, fiscal risk management. In addition, the DBCC shall also prepare and submit a mid-year fiscal report and an annual fiscal report on the government fiscal program. On the part of Congress, Section 20 will, as much as practicable, henceforth require that the filing of a proposed revenue eroding and expenditure bill should be accompanied by financial and budgetary information sheets containing an estimate of financial and budgetary implication of the proposed bill for the initial year of implementation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what the Budget Reform Act is all about. It is a measure that promises not just change, for as we all agree, change has already begun, but the stability and the permanence of the changes. My dear colleagues, the Philippines is in a modernizing mode. Our goal is to be an upper middle income country by 2022. The emerging consensus is that we are on the right track. Let me say this, Mr. President. Ang makikinabang po dito ay ang susunod na administrasyon. Makikinabang din ang taong bayan ngayon pag natin matapos ang taong ito. Pero ang talagang lubusang makikinabang ay ang magiging pangulo at ang administrasyon sa 2022. The Build, Build, Build program would pave the way for the golden age of infrastructure, our investment in education, healthcare, social infrastructure, would convert our young people into an agile, technologically savvy workforce, without question, a formidable asset in an aging world. But we need a modern, efficient, and transparent budget system to keep up with the exponential growth in government spending. Having an annual cash-based budgeting system, some advanced and technology-based systems would propel the Philippines to have one of the best budget institutions, not only in Asia, but also in the entire world. This prospect of a modern, efficient, and open budget system is not an empty dream. It is within our grasp. The Executive Department has adopted reform measures that have catapulted the Philippines to be one of the best performing budget institutions in the world. But these reforms are not permanent, as we all know. They can be reversed because they are not carved in stone, neither are they enacted by law. Precisely, this bill seeks to institutionalize these reforms, set them into law, so that the next president who may come from this august chamber, who at the moment is nameless and faceless, whoever she or he may be, will be constrained from slipping back into the slow, weak, and opaque budget system. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, let us join the executive in this glorious quest for a modern budget system. Let us play a role and be part of the solution. I urge you now to help me pass the BRA. I urge you to vote for this game-changing Budget Reform Act in time. Thank you very much, Mr. President.